Hi guys. Uh, so yes, hi, I'm Ishani. I'm from Open Jira Hub. Um, I'm going to talk a bit quicker because I'm going to try and make up a bit of time, skip over some slides, but please, if something is not clear, ask. Okay, so enabling bottom-up governance of environmental data. So essentially, whoop, wait. Oh, that helps. Okay, good. How does this work? Okay, cool. So really, I, when I was thinking about it, I should have written governing with environmental data. Because even though from a technical point of view, we're concerned with all the different accessibility of the data and you know how to make the system work with people, in reality, we want to use that data so that you know people can make decisions based on it. Okay, so how do we govern with environmental data? So this is a great paper I was reading. Basically, the, the, the conclusion was that when you take these global environmental assessments, and you take those goals and the aims and you bring it down to a local level and you explore what could be possible to meet those big goals and aims, but locally, it actually makes it a lot more tangible and a lot more valuable. Okay, so this is one of the key points I really wanna talk about because this is a challenge we've faced. So this is a output of work. Um, several of the authors are here. Uh, so it is a tree species distribution, potential and actual, okay? 30 meter resolution, dark green means that uh, the probability distribution of Quercus roba, dark green yeah, there, it can grow most places and on this one, it's not growing everywhere, okay? Potential distribution, actual. So, but how useful is this really on the ground, right? So we were trying to test it to go, okay, who wants tree maps? What, how do you work out what tree to plant where? This shouldn't be you know, a huge endeavor. It should be really easy to access this information. And then we looked at our data and we broke it down on this farm and then we went, oh, okay. So we have the actual probability of hazel occurring and the potential. So this is a landholder who wants to plant trees. And this is not very useful. If you look at it and you're looking puzzled, I agree. It's not useful at all, really. So then we had to step it a bit further to go, okay, we need to process our data a bit more and just pull out like, what is the really important information for the person on that piece of land to make decisions about what tree to plant where, right? So we didn't finish this journey. We got to a certain point where the user went, okay, this is good enough for me. These are the trees that will go in the blank pixels I have and I'll make the design myself, it's okay. Right, so this is an example of trying to get big data and big ideas and big solutions down to actually have contextual solutions at the local scale, right? So allowing multiplicity. So when I was reading through about how companies uh, report now on this uh, SDGs, uh, ESG, sorry, um, and you know, they're talking about, you know, what do you get rewards with your carrots or penalties with your sticks? Now, 614 reporting requirements, which to me is a lot. Maybe come to this is a lot, right? And I, I noted that the, the SDGs have become like, so the Sustainable Development Goals have become a global reference for sustainability reporting. So I know one of these SDGs quite well, familiar, like quite familiar. I've spent a lot of years working on it in the background, helping write reports that never have your name on it, doing analyses for people that, you know, you do it because they need it. So in reality, for a country to use its own national data to modify its 15.3.1 report, okay? So instead of using the default global data, go, I have a national data set, I wanna insert this in the analysis and fill out my big reports. They are using open data layers, right? Because no, but no country has all of these inputs themselves. They usually will have one or two. They use an open source plugin that goes into an open source GIS calling a closed source compute engine, right? So the bit that I'd really like to point at is being really important, whoops, let me go back, is essentially that this open source plugin, the connection between all the data and the GIS and then connecting it to some computing, this is basically one guy coding the whole thing. There's a few people who help, okay? One person enabling national governments across the world, 
right, to make reports for their countries. Okay, so for me, this is a bit scary. <laughs> All right, so drilling down to more like a, a wider investment level, you know, you need, you have projects that follow what's called land degradation neutrality, which is like the SDG 15.3.1. They also need proof. They need monitoring and proof that they are complying. So these, this uh, methodology, which we also have, right, um, it's a bit too complicated for projects to just implement. It's quite a bit of work. It's quite a barrier. It's quite a challenge. Okay, so it's not cooked enough. So down to a farm level, we have individual managers of plots who are making, you know, essentially very significant changes here, right, in the productivity of their land. This is 20 years across the bottom, okay, and there's a significant shift in the management of that piece of land. It was a dairy before and a dairy after. They just changed how they did it. So this person is very excited about that change but they've got no way to communicate it or to really prove it to people like us, okay? All right, I'm basically almost out of time. So bottom up and top down, uh, what I learned and what I'd like this project to help solve is that data doesn't flow across the scales, okay? Like a project is not connected to the national level, is not really can flow up into the international report, not easily, it's difficult, it's too hard, okay? And so my point is that little is hooked up yet, okay? These pieces can, this work can be done, but it's all in separate areas and you have to mash it together yourself. It's too difficult for everyone. And we need feedbacks. We need to know from people on the ground if the data is poor or if it's good or if they have new information and it needs to be updated. So this is the most complicated one. Basically, bottom-up governance and top-down functions. We really, <clears throat> the most important thing is that big international agreements, by the time you get to the local level, well, doesn't, you know, they're important, but what do you actually do? As like on an area that you can influence, what do you do, right? So that's where you get the bottom-up that comes in where actually you need local, like localized knowledge, local risk assessment, local adaptation plans that then feed up to these global goals. So quick failure, top-down governance uh, in Australia, born a billion dollars of public money was wasted, um, essentially because they were not careful enough in how they were policing or governing uh, regrowth of native forests, and they're issuing credits to projects that did not exist. So as a consequence, it's not only Australia, it's all the registries this happens to. So as a consequence, you get things like localized truth for sale. Here's a company that offers quality assurance. Is this credit real? Essentially, what are you getting for your money? And the person who runs this, he's a, he's a very good analyst. He knows what he's doing, right? So. Why are companies buying this information? Because generally, if a company is gonna greenwash, I think they're gonna do it anyway, okay? You know, they'll spend their money, they'll greenwash, they'll go good enough. But I think most companies don't want to end up being accused of greenwashing because they didn't know that what they were buying was not of great quality, right? They don't want to be accidental greenwashers. They actually wanna do something. At least I believe that. So the question becomes, how do you know what you're buying? Okay, these are hamburgers, four hamburgers, and one of them is a cake. <laughs> Can anyone guess which one is a cake? I had to sneak it in, come on. Come on, quick, guess, guess, guess. Ooh, it's pretty good. Some of you are getting it. See, I had to, I had to get is a cake in here. So number one, right? So you think you're buying a hamburger, and then when you get it, actually, no, it's a cake and it's full of fairy sparkles and it's not really real. It's not a hamburger, okay? So this is the main thing that needs to be avoided, okay? All right, super quick, because we're way out of time. Basically, we've broken it up, passive bottom-up versus active bottom-up governance. If we do our job properly in this project, you won't see all this, pass all this work that supports the passive work that supports bottom-up governance, okay? You won't see 
that it's been made sure there's per permissive licenses, that vendor lock-in is avoided, that um, there's a multiplicity of solutions for you, that you have standards where somebody can check if it's good enough. So the more active things you'll see, you know, giving and revoking consent for your data, you can contribute data to systems, and you can give feedback. There's, a, there's loops, right? You can actually give assessment. So for wide participation, essentially, we're talking about soft instruments. So this is essentially providing information so people can make choice locally. Wide engagement of users and to support local process, so movements, social movement, social change. So this is us. We're a bit of a movement altogether uh, from a scientific point of view. And if we do our job well, you won't see it. You'll just get your answers that you want. So uh, we'll start with a little poll from Ishani, or a word cloud, actually. So you should all have access to it on, um, on Slido. So her question to you, what are the most important aspects of data governance to you? Um, so you can submit um, up to, I think, 25 characters, so a couple of words. Uh, you can submit multiple times. Um, so just to get you thinking about um, issues presentation. And then, of course, uh, if any of you have questions for her, we have a few minutes for that. Um, maybe we can start with um, those of you present in the audience, you can raise your hand since you can't ask questions while the poll is active on Slido. Um, but great, I'm seeing um, a lot of transparency, transparency and accessibility, fairness. Ooh, all right, someone's familiar with uh, the, the data terminology here. That's great, we'll be talking a lot about fair data today. So essentially, you want to be able to get a hamburger and know that it's a hamburger and not a cake. Great, okay. Well, excellent. Well, we can collect this after. Any questions and then we wrap up? Yes, okay, so um, also any questions? Okay, cool. Can you switch to the questions? Um, or maybe we can let, let people do this and um, maybe I can read a question off of someone's Slido. Oh, great, okay. <laughs> Ish can also answer questions about OEM in general. Oh, I like that one. Do you see one you like? Can I take that one? Absolutely. Yeah, so once we map farmers' land and KPIs, uh, we can see who is really degrading land and being a poor manager. Isn't this against people's privacy, private property rights? Yeah, uh, in Australia, they say the roof's off the shed. That's for the camera. <laughs> oh, sorry. That the, the roof is off the shed. So everybody can see a piece of land. You can't hide the information that comes, right? But farm, I know from anti-governance uh, movements, um, farmers are very aware that you need to have ground data, ground truth information to make those models more accurate for most things. For a lot of the cropping and yields, uh, they have this in private information. But for things like soil carbon and other ecosystem services, you really need ground control points to make accurate enough predictions. So their defense is, I don't give you my points, so your predictions are too uncertain. And they seem happy with that. But on a positive spin, um, yeah, essentially, it's better to go for the positive and bring the data and information to positive cases and go, would you like to tell your story? You don't point to people and say, you're bad. It's like someone telling you, you know, you're raising your children wrong. You should do it like this. It's never a good conversation. Yeah, so point to positive cases. Perfect. Thank you, Ish. Yeah, unfortunately, that's all we have time for.